my chat box as well as my performance monitor up to make sure my computer doesn't uh, absolutely take a crap here. Um, but yeah, there we go. I am uh, Eric. I go by Non Demo Guy, and we are going to be working today. Ipo Hancroft, thank you. <laughs> Tell me if the if the audio is coming through well. Uh, this is my first time ever using Twitch. I was literally setting this up a little bit earlier today trying to make sure that it was going to work, <laughs> putting the background together and everything else. So hopefully everything is going good. PS1 addict, welcome. Um, so yeah, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this started. This is what we're going to be trying to create today. Um, it is, of course, Lord Nikon's laptop from the movie Hackers from 1995. This is one that I did a bit earlier. If you guys follow me on uh, Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, any of those, you should recognize this. Um, this is the one that I created to make sure that I could actually do a video. Um, and uh, yeah, as far as the the, the camera that is uh, the, the long distance view there, it is a piece of crap. Uh, so <laughs> you're going to have to uh, apologize for the, the quality on that one. But hopefully the laptop is coming across pretty well. But um, yeah. So this is the one we created. Uh, the reason I created it twice is because this is actually not the correct laptop. This is a Toshiba Satellite 1950, and the correct one from the film is an 1850. Uh, so I went ahead and got um, the proper one, and uh, so we're gonna redo the laptop uh, in this version. So um, hopefully that's why everybody's here today, and. Uh, that's what we will get started doing. So we figured out what the laptop was um, because we spoke with the US prop manager. Um, as you can see, I'll, I'll do a little comparison here. Uh, they are extremely close, right? From the film, you really can't see a whole lot besides like the hinges. Um, you can see the back of the, uh, of the laptop, but the trick there is that the back of the laptop, the real laptop, uh, doesn't match the film. And why is that? Uh, well, if we look at uh, what the film looks like, um, let me unlock this and see if it will show up. You'll see that uh, you got like a big square port, a couple of things like it looks almost like an HDMI port. Um, that's really where I started to try figuring out the laptop and realized that uh, it absolutely was not the proper laptop. And uh, so from that image, I figured out that the back is from an Apple, of course. Uh, <laughs> this is an Apple 180C uh, PowerBook. And uh, this is actually the guts for just about every computer in the film with the exception of the clear laptop and uh, Kate Libby's laptop, as well as the laptop that Dade uses inside the uh, the phone booth. But um, so picked up one of these and we're gonna try to do a, a pretty faithful recreation using uh, the screen from this one, the back plate. But I think at, at some point I'm gonna use uh, a Raspberry Pi inside here. Uh, and try to make it functional at some point. But um, what I'm going to do is is gut the battery. And this battery is really weird to release. Uh, where is it? There we go. If I gut this, um, I can fit a, a Raspberry Pi in there pretty well. So I think that uh, I'm going to try to make it functional in some way, shape, or form. So. Um, yeah, well, that's that's what we're going to do. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is, is clean this up a little bit and uh, go over how, how we're going to take it apart. Now, like I said, it is obviously a little bit different than the one we already did. But uh, yeah, let's let's get at it. Um, I don't have to worry about this sticker because this is going to be taken off and will actually. Uh, will be stripping all of that off and putting some body filler in there and sanding it up. All right, this is going to require 
different tools. Um, and we'll use body filler to uh, to smooth all this out. We'll do the same on these little LED lights back here um, and uh, clean all that up. So we'll strip this off, clean that up later. Now as for tools, yeah, let's go over tools real quick. Um, I didn't think I was going to need an X-Acto knife, but yeah, there you go. Luckily I had to decide. Uh, a small flathead screwdriver for prying in case I need to pry on the, the case at all. Um, I hope I don't have to do too much of that because it can mar the plastic pretty well. For the apple, we're going to need a Torx, uh, a very small Torx bit. It says it's a VT10 in size because the screws on the bottom of the apple um, are actually Torx. So we'll use, we'll use this for the apple. Um, luckily, the bottom of the Toshiba is your standard uh, Phillips head screwdriver. Um, so we will also use uh, some cotton swabs, some alcohol, and a magic eraser. If you guys have never used this type of stuff before, uh, it is really good for cleaning plastic. Um, and some of this will probably clean up a little bit without uh, without even the alcohol. Um, Zevo, what's up, man? Appreciate the uh, the assistance. Um, talking about the web page, we are uh, we were talking a little bit about uh, hosting the web page on uh, uh, Amazon hosting uh, their web services. Um, so I am looking into that. I, I will need help for sure. <laughs> so we'll scrub this up just a little bit. I you know I don't, really don't need to take all these little marks and stuff off. Uh, my biggest hope is just to get any dirt or oils um, that are going to affect any paint um, off of the case. The uh, the paint that we actually will be doing, if, if you look now that it's a little bit clean, it's a fairly obvious difference, right? You've cut your slightly browned plastic. This is actually primed in white and then pearl coated um, with just some paint that I got from Home Depot. Uh, the sticker I made myself, um, this one over here, uh, you know, I, I look forever. I mean, I know that there's a 90s sticker collector out there somewhere that probably has the real thing. Um, but uh, so, yeah, I, I ended up buying a vinyl cutter and uh, creating it myself in Illustrator. The Supreme sticker, it, quite honestly, this is probably not a real Supreme sticker. I mean, if you go on eBay, there's a billion people selling these for like, you know, a dollar a piece. Um, I just found something that was the right price uh, <laughs> and uh, the right size and shape and everything and uh, and picked one up. But, um, oh, I'll actually go over something else real quick too. The, uh, the keyboard that we will be using will be from the Apple. Um, this keyboard, however, is the original uh, keyboard from this laptop. Um, I obviously had to paint it. Uh, if you can see, there's, there are a few mistakes here and there, but that's why we do a test first. Uh, I also ended up uh, on, also on eBay buying a black uh, re-sticker kit um, because once you paint over uh, everything, obviously you're going to need to put some letters back on it. So uh, we'll be using that as well. So anybody looking to do this, uh, yeah, pick up a, a set of black uh, you know, relabel kits uh, for a keyboard. Um, there's a couple I had to resize because uh, the shift key, for, for instance, uh, was the sticker was just way too long. Um, and uh, a couple of these F keys and the home key uh, were quite a bit smaller. Um, so I, I think I've got the cover of this pretty well clean. Um, yeah, Windex really does work really good uh, if you've got something on there that's, that's pretty nasty. Um, if you've got any spots that are really oily, Honestly, uh, uh, the way that I prep the uh, the pagers, for for instance, um, is just to take uh, a cotton swab and put alcohol on it, and just you know just go over the whole thing. For anybody who maybe saw that video, um, this by the way is the pager that Renly Santiago um, signed for me. So it's pretty cool. That was I was pretty stoked about that. I'm actually going to try to see if Renly will uh, will jump into the comments on one of these videos as we go along, so uh, so people can sort of uh, you know interact with with some of the stars. I've actually been uh, talking quite a bit with him on a, a couple projects, um, 
not hackers related, but other projects and, and things that I, in fact, I was helping him do some, uh, uh, <laughs> do some, some very light IT work uh, with Google uh, Calendar and setting up some events and stuff like that. Um, he's, he's the coolest guy, I, I swear. Uh, everybody that I've interacted with from the film is, is just, uh, you know, a r really class act. Um, not the least of which is Roger, uh, Roger Caperton. Um, that guy, man, he, uh, he seriously hooked us up. Um, you know, I, I had to pay for a photographer to go out there and get all the photos, but, uh, I mean, everything else, Roger just did it, uh, you know, out of, out of kindness. Um, and, uh, yeah, we didn't have to pay for a thing. It was, it was pretty sweet. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's start breaking this thing down and, uh, Hopefully breaking it down and not breaking it. Um, good news is, is this isn't actually functioning. Uh, it will turn on, but my guess is that uh, the hard drive is long since uh, expired. Um, the uh, the screen will light up, but yeah, you get you get no boot. So I suspect if I were to to put a new hard drive in here, that we could make it work, but. Obviously, it's not uh, it's not really what I'm interested in. We're gonna do something else, go a little bit uh, different direction with it. Now, as I'm taking all this stuff apart, I do have uh, a couple little baskets sitting here by the side, and uh, so I'll just kind of throw stuff in there. Um, can I get them to sign the pages? Possibly. Um, it takes a little bit of work. Oh, that's interesting. What are these F for? Um, yeah, you know, I, I can always ask. And if I have like enough people interested, I can maybe send some stuff out. Um, you know, honestly, if, if it gets too involved and, uh, you know, I'm sending, you know, a bunch of pagers out, I might ha might have to charge uh, a little bit of a fee for it and, uh, and give whoever some kickbacks. But, uh, you know, I don't mind asking. Um, you know, one of the things I've learned in life is, is always ask <laughs> because, uh, you never know, right? It, at least ask. And if they say no, they say no, but you'd be surprised at, at what people will do just because you ask. Um, so yeah, a little life lesson. Um, I'm going to need a smaller screwdriver for these holes here. Um, I don't think this is, oh, actually I'm going to be able to get it. That'll work. Yeah, let me catch up on the comments here. I'm gonna try to uh, to make sure I'm responding to what people are saying, but I, I get so tied up in these projects, so I apologize if I get to the comments a little bit late. Um, P.S. Attic says he's got two two old uh, dead laptops at his house. Yeah, yeah, you know I, I've got a whole stack um, of laptops under my uh, my dresser back here. Um, all stuff for, for projects and things like that. The, actually the first, uh, Apple laptop that I picked up was the wrong one. It, uh, I think it's a 150 and it's a little bit different. It, you'll, you can see from the back that it's not quite right. Um, I, I honestly, I got this one because it was ridiculously cheap and the screen that it uses, um, this bezel is all that I had originally wanted to use um, because you can see that this bezel is used for uh, Dade's uh, luggable PC, which I happen to have right back here. Um, so I'm going to be doing that computer as well at some point. <laughs> All right, I think I've got, oh, there's a couple more. Yeah, the, I tell you what, these compact portables, you know, I'm gonna, I don't have enough space to show it on the, uh, the table here, but um, these compact portables are, uh, are really pretty cool. Now mine did not come with a screen, um, so I don't know if you guys can, can see that, it doesn't have a screen in it, um, but I thought that that was fine because I'm going to be using an Apple screen anyways. But uh, I mean, the, the 
the ingenuity and, and design that went into making these things is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, the way that everything comes apart and you've got all these little trap doors and, and whatnot. Uh, actually, this is called a compact portable 486C. They're very hard to come by. Uh, I found one on the vintage computing forum. Um, and because it didn't have the screen, you know, the, the guy that I got it from had been, uh, you know, he, he held on to it. He wanted to rebuild it, but he had it for like four years and couldn't come up with uh, a replacement screen. So I ended up picking it up for like a hundred bucks shipped, which was a hell of a deal. Um, but I, I still, to this day, have uh, a custom search on eBay for, for any time something pops up. Um, just so that, it, you know, if I do find something, I can uh, let people know. Maybe get uh, get something out there for somebody else. <laughs> yeah, the those uh, Compact really came out with uh, some of the first portables um, that were available to the consumers. Um, they weren't cheap, of course, for, for all of us uh, old fools that uh, got involved in computing really early. Uh, yeah, crap was, was not cheap back in the day. To, to say the least. All right, I, I'm gonna pry off these little rubber pads just because sometimes they like to hide screws underneath them. Um, I'll, I'll hold on to them, maybe I can stick them back on, but uh, usually what I'll do in cases like this is I'll just buy uh, you know a little sheet of neoprene rubber or, or something else and just you know make them new. Uh, Quite honestly, they these rubber pieces on old computers will even tend to get, you know, brittle and cracked and crusty and all sorts of nasty. Um, and uh, yeah, they're just not worth saving. So I think we're just about there. I'm gonna take a look under some of these other things here. Yeah, you know the the Raspberry Pis. That's that's what I'm gonna do with with this guy. I've actually been looking up um, how to take a laptop keyboard, and you can get the the ribbon adapters to USB. Um, and uh, I'm, I've actually seen a YouTube video where a guy took. In fact, it was probably an old. Uh, uh, it might even be an old Toshiba or, or maybe an old Compaq uh, laptop keyboard, and hooked it up to a Raspberry Pi. So. I'm, I'm going to try to follow that. They also, of course, make the screens. Um, you can run uh, the old uh, LCD screens off of a Raspberry Pi as well. But you do have to have a little adapter board. But they're like, you know, 20 bucks out of China. So they're, they're not expensive. Um, now, I know for a fact that under these little stickers here uh, that they are hiding screws. So we are going to take those off. Yeah, that 8-bit, if, if anybody hasn't checked out 8-bit guy, um, first of all, I don't know where you've been, uh, <laughs> but uh, go check that guy out on YouTube, um, the 8-bit guy. Uh, I, his video is what, you know, originally taught me how uh, keyboards actually work. Um, it's just really fascinating, uh, you know, some of the stuff that he puts up, some of his refurbishing. Um, you know, I'm a I'm a big uh, Nintendo collector, and I have a, a, about 500 or so uh, of the original NES cartridges, and some of them get pretty nasty in color. And uh, he he actually has shown how you can remove the uh, the discoloration on things. And uh, yeah, so that that's an extremely helpful video. I'm not going to waste too much time pulling this sticker stuff off of here, but. Um, A new desk with a, a PC integrated inside of it. Is it going to have like a, an orange um, Perspex or a plexiglass keyboard and and uh, make sounds a la <laughs> the plague? Because that would be awesome. I would pay to see that.
All right, I think we've got all the screws out of here. Um, I, I've looked underneath the keys uh, because actually taking apart the compact portable, there are some screws underneath some of the keys. So you have to lift the key cap off uh, in order to get to those screws. But um, I've got these little... If you look, I've got these little rubber things in the corner of the screen that they don't stick out far enough to be a pad, I don't think. Um, let me try prying on it a little bit and see if it will come up. I doubt they're hiding anything under there. Usually these cases are just sort of uh, snap fit together, but I'd rather not break this because these 1850s don't exactly come up too often either um, and given that this is a rubber piece I I, I doubt that uh, it's going to be too difficult to get aha you see you see that under there <laughs> yeah I'm glad I did. I'm glad I pulled this apart um, but yeah we'll, we'll keep these rubber things PS1 addict, you know, 140 PS1 games is a pretty decent collection. I came across a, uh, I was out game hunting on, well, just around the neighborhood. And uh, for like 20 bucks, I got an old PS1, um, some old strategy guides. And uh, they had Ogre Battle, um, which was in like pristine condition. Um the only thing it was missing, that, so it wasn't complete. The only thing it was missing, however, was I guess there was a character or a monster sticker that came with it. Um, and, uh, you know, it was in such good shape that I just bought it, uh, not really knowing what it was. Um, and come to find out, it's like one of the top 10 uh, rarest PS1 games, I think, uh, according to... Um, Come on now. According to uh, a retro game website. All right. Um, I want to try to get this bottom piece off first. This this part of the case actually does come off, and it will make it easier for me to remove this the entirety of the screen. But um, I'm trying to figure out. How to best get this out of here? Yeah, there we go. All right. So we've got the keyboard off. That actually came off way easier than it did on the other one. Um, we have a ribbon, as we expected. So we don't really need this. Um, you know, I, I might try throwing it on eBay or something. I know that there's already some parts out there for an 1850, but yeah, you never know. Maybe I'll make a couple bucks on it. Yeah, PS1, you know, I have a soft spot for some PS1 games, um, but uh, the only ones that I still own are uh, the original um, Resident Evil, Resident Evil 2, in the uh, uh, the first Grand Theft Auto. I think I have sitting over there still. Um, everything else is is original Nintendo and uh, some some Super Nintendo games that I really enjoyed. Yeah. Oh, so you've got some uh, some arcades as well. Yeah, I, I had when I was a kid. Um, I had an original arcade of the. Uh, it was called Super Zaxxon. If anybody knows what that is, or the original Zaxxon. And uh, the only reason I had it, you know, I, I was not well off. Um, <laughs> I was the furthest thing from well off. You know, we lived with my grandma until I was, you know going into junior high but uh 
<laughs> my cousin wanted in a stereo box. And so we had a, a full size cabinet of uh, Super Zaxxon. But my, my thing in terms of arcades was always pinball machines. Uh, the pinball machine that I had to have you know, when I quote unquote grew up was uh, Fun House by Williams. Um, and uh, so I ended up buying one of those and uh, refurbishing it completely myself. So I've, I definitely have a soft spot for pinball machines. So I'm going to see if you guys can see this because this is really sort of awkward. Um, so I've got this part off, but the screen, the ribbon cable for the screen, if you can see it back down in here, is still holding the two pieces together. Um, so I'm trying to figure out the best way of taking that off. It looks like I can probably get the hinges off. Um, so maybe I'll do that. Um, Let's, let's give it a try. It, it won't hurt. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah, that's that, that friggin' pinball game, man. Fun house. It's, uh, for anybody who is not into pinball or anything, it, it had basically a ventriloquist dummy's head inside of the game. Um, and, uh, it would like talk to you and the eyes would, would, you know, pretty rudimentally, but they would watch you um, or rather watch the ball when you were playing. Um, I mean, it was all based on this, the switches and things that the, that the ball hit that would just fire solenoids that made the eyes turn. But uh, it was, it was really, really a unique game. And they ended up using that same idea for another pinball game called uh, Roadshow or something like that. But it actually, had two heads inside of the game, so um, yeah, kind of kind of interesting. All right, so we're we're close to having this thing off of here. Um, I, th I think this was the right way to go to take the uh, the hinges off. Yeah, no kidding about the the pinball machines being expensive. Um, I, I I'm still kicking myself. I I sold it. It's probably you know ten or twelve years ago now that I sold mine, um, and I sold it for like eighteen hundred bucks. Um, and uh, those stupid things, even in in relatively rough shape, uh, will still go for like you know twenty five hundred dollars to three grand easy. Um, it's pretty crazy how expensive they are. Oh yeah, high speed. That's a classic. I mean that. I mean, they made uh, ports of it for, you know, Nintendo and, and you know, and that wasn't exactly easy to do. Uh, so, I mean, you, you know that that had a pretty decent following. Um, all right. This should lift off. Feels like it lifts off. Am I missing a screw? Maybe I am. I don't know. Let's see if I can. Uh, yes. No. Maybe so. Nah, it's got to come off. Man, I can feel it's free on that side. It's just caught up on this side for some reason. All right. Well, at least I think I have enough leeway now to where I can get this ribbon out of here. Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, that, that helped quite a bit, actually. Okay, back in business. So when you say that uh, that it's being re-stenciled, are you talking about the play field or the cabinet artwork? 
um, PS1 addict on your uh, high speed machine. Oh, that is interesting. Take a look at this. Um, this is the first time I've seen a screen where the ribbon is. Oh, maybe it just pulls off. It does just pull off. Check that out. Usually you'll see the ribbon like uh, like the other style, right? I, and I'm fairly certain we'll see this on the Apple. You'll usually see the screen have something like this that fits in, but this actually has a socket. Um, if I would have known that easier, it would have been really easy to just pop that out of there, but uh, cool. All right. I'm going to set this aside and we'll finish pulling the screen apart here. Um, we should have quite a bit more room to maneuver now. And uh, if this silly thing would just come out of here then I'd be much happier. All right, well, you know what? It's at the point now where I can definitely take this casing off. Yeah, that cabinet artwork, especially if it was in, like, uh, a bar or a gas station, or you know, I mean, you never know what the life of these things was. But uh, if it was sitting anywhere near the sun, then uh, yeah, they tend to get pretty badly faded. Oh, come on. Now it's just uh, now it's just being annoying. Pinball pimp. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. The worst part about doing these types of things is, oh, there we go. And I can peek in there. See what the hell's holding on. Ah, yes, indeed. There we go. It had this little lip on it, so I just had to lift it up and slide it out of the way. All right. Much better. But now we really have to get this side apart. It was not this difficult on the other one, so I'm, it bothers me that it's being so tricky. If I can pry on this, on the bottom of these hinges, uh, at least it's somewhere where it's not going to be easily seen if it gets marred up a little bit. So we'll see if we can make that happen here. I'm not missing anything. No, just stubborn plastic is all. This is where things get fun. like there's it's 
things I can pop down right here. Yep. There's one. My fingers back in there. There's two. Do that on the other side. So you guys can see the way that these clips work. And you just have to get figure out where they are and then just push down on them a little bit. And then it usually will tend to separate. Um, there's probably one more further down this way, but yeah. Yeah, th this is some pretty stout plastic. I'll tell you that much. This one's going to be weird because I have to pry in the opposite direction. There's that one. Probably about right here. There we go. Couple on the top. Yes, sir. You always just have to go slow and steady with these things, otherwise the uh, the plastic will give before the <laughs> before the snaps will, and uh, that doesn't treat anybody well. All right, I think we're almost there. I'm guessing one more of these, and that ought to just about do it. I know it's right in here. Oh, they even have them along the bottom? Are you serious? Those are going to be a pain in the ass to get to. So we'll just uh, try to massage them out of the way here. Come on. There we go. Almost there. I can see it. Perfect. Finally. We'll set this aside now. Uh, the rest of this stuff I'm just going to blast through here. Um, yeah, I'm interested about these these plastic cards you're talking about. Um, are they like wedges almost, or how, how does it work exactly? Because that, yeah, that would be very would have been very useful. Um, you know, something that's not metal that's going to mar up all the, the plastic. NEC Versa. Oh, Compact Contour. You know, those, uh, if anybody doesn't know or didn't realize in the film, um, Freak's character actually has a laptop, and it is indeed a compact Conchura. Um, it's the 325C, however, uh, and not the 433C. But uh, yeah, just a little fun fact. Um, <laughs> they, he did have a laptop, and it, I mean, you, you probably realize that he has a laptop. I mean, you have the whole scene with. Uh, uh, you know, Richard Gill, the whole 
I'm watching you've seen. Um, but I mean, you never really see it outside of that. Uh, you see it for just maybe a brief, very brief moment um, on top of the Empire State Building. And it, it took me forever to realize that it was actually a laptop. But uh, when when Serial is uh, standing on the corner, um, leaning over the railing, there's like, you can see Kate's bag and some other things sitting on the ground. And uh, you'll see the Puerto Rican flag. And that is actually a sticker that's on the lid of a uh, of Freak's laptop. So again, just an interesting fun fact. Um, we actually asked uh, in the interview, um, we asked Renally about the, uh, the laptop, but he unfortunately he didn't really have any other scenes uh, where he was filmed using it or or anything like that. So it was just kind of a one of those things. All right, we now have well, it's going to make a liar out of me here, um, but we do now have this thing apart. If I can fold these down. To be able to just slide them out. There's one. And two. Go. Cool. It's the screen. Now it's got some weird something going on here. I assume that's abra for abrasion resistance or something. I don't know what that is. Let's uh, yeah. Let's just peel that up. Yeah, the way they do the hinges on on these, you know what? Screw it. I'll just put some <laughs> some extra tape on there. All right, lid ready to go. Screen. I'm gonna set this aside. Um, just for grins. But uh, let's take this module off of here. I might be able to do something with this screen at, at some future date. I, I always say that, but chances are, are that I will just end up holding on to it forever and uh, nothing will ever get done. Well, the solder joints on that one just came off. Whatever. Whatever. I don't have my tools to very properly do this, but um, I don't, I don't want to waste a bunch of time just taking these things off of here. That one. This one. All right. Now we're good. Well, we're doing all right. We got about 15 minutes on the stream. I'm the rest of the the compact is going to be pretty easy at this point. Um, oh, the Toshiba. My apologies. It is a Toshiba. Um, so I probably will not. Well, yeah, we'll do it. It's it's actually just a few screws. Uh, we'll get the disk drive out. I actually uh, stripped the the disk drive down. Um, the floppy disk drive on the uh, the test version so it is not in any way shape or form functional um it's just kind of the door that is is super glued together and then stuck in place um i, I really don't see any any way that i can uh, reasonably make it functional um but i don't know i'll, I'll do some youtube video checking but uh yeah Oh, Zevo, Zevo, Zevo. Have I ever considered reaching out to Roger Burton, the costume director? Have you even seen the page? <laughs> yeah, we actually have uh, photos of all of the original costumes. Well, not all. I won't say all because there are a few that we do not have. Um, but, uh, yeah, we reached out. Uh, he is the coolest guy. And uh, he, he basically uh, set up some space in his gallery 
so that I could send a photographer over and uh, spend two days photographing everything that he had. Um, it, it's really cool. So check out the uh, the web page and uh, and look at look at all of the con costume content that we have uh, to your heart's content. Um, there's the ye oldie laptop IDE drive. Oh, I have it. Oh, it's two. Okay. That's interesting. Double ribbons. It's definitely different. Uh, yeah, again, my guess is that this thing is just completely shot. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's that. Uh, floppy disk drive. Also ribbon. A weird. I'm guessing this is a, a little stack of coin batteries, probably for uh, for system memory. Yeah, Zevo, if you go to uh, hackerscurator.com and uh, in the software section, um, you can uh, you can take a look at all of the costumes. Um, and in fact. Uh, I don't know if you can see it back here, but uh, I have, and it, it's it's how I was able to reproduce the shirt that I'm wearing. Um, but that is actually one of the two Quicksilver shirts that Johnny Lee Miller wore in the film. Um, I was able to actually get one of the two from Roger Burton uh, for a price, of course. He didn't just give it to me, but... Uh, <laughs> um, so there you go, one of one of two from the actual film, uh, and the only place that I've and I've looked, I have looked and looked and looked. The only place where you can actually tell that that is the shirt is the scene where Dade goes back into Kate's room um, to check out her computer, and it's only the scene where he kind of walks through the door, stops and like takes a sip of his drink, and then uh, goes over to the table. Um, only for that short segment uh, can you see it. Everything else is a different shirt. Um, so, interesting uh, trivia there for you. How is this attached? Oh, it's a socket as well. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty sweet. So, as a result, you know, I, I recreated the pattern in Illustrator and. Uh, I printed off one of these shirts. I'm actually gonna try to to sell these online, um, you know, on the web page for anybody that's interested in one. Uh, I know a lot of people have been doing uh, cosplays and stuff, um, myself included. And uh, I went to the Denver Comic, the first Denver Comic Con I went to, which was two years ago. Um, I went as as Dade in that setup that you see right there. Um, so if anybody's interested in, in one of these shirts, uh, trust me, you will never find one online. I've been looking for years. Um, though I, I highly encourage everyone to make me a liar and find one online, but I, I have not been able to find one. And I've checked everywhere. eBay, Polyvore, Etsy. Um, yeah, no, no such luck. Yeah, if you're interested, uh, I, I'm actually working, uh, you know, uh, Eiffel Honcraft or Handcraft in the uh, in the chat is actually helping us with the page. And uh, one of the things we're going to be doing here pretty soon is setting up a little marketplace. Uh, we're just trying to figure out the best way to do it. Um, all right, that, this is it, it's always interesting to me to pull apart laptops and see how how they were put together. I mean, just look at, I mean, how that, uh, how this is socketed together. Um, this is some sort of daughter board, but it really, uh, I guess it's just the power button. It is just the power button. So yeah, crazy, crazy. And then if I can get this part out, what do we have here. There we go. All right, we've essentially got this one uh, all broken down. 
and uh, I will probably leave all of this uh, aluminum in here just because it's usually you'll find that it's like glued down um, and I, I just am not really interested in messing with it but um, cool this is definitely far enough to get it to where I can uh, fairly easily paint it without any issue um, so yeah just gonna check real quick to see if this is gonna come up easy but I think I'm probably not just just not gonna mess with it take there I can in fact I can see where it's stuck down so I'll do that off camera um, we've got about 10 minutes let's let's see how far we can get into this apple shall we Comic-Con in Bulgaria, nice. Heck yeah, gaming, you know, I've, I've looked at getting a gaming laptop for uh, for doing videos. I mean, I, I don't play a lot of computer games anymore um, just because, you know, having a family and, and work, I, I don't have the time that I once had. Um, but, uh, you know, they are plenty powerful to do some uh some video rendering on so that's what i was thinking about doing with it yeah, i saw you guys talking about the clear laptops um so i don't know if you if you saw that the page is down right now oh well we got to fix that give me two seconds i should still have audio actually before i go off and do that i'll just check real quick No, it's up, but uh, it it may uh, it may be slow because of the stream. So I do actually host that out of the house. So <laughs> I am sucking up all the bandwidth. But um, yeah, I was about to say about the uh, the clear laptop. If you have seen the photos on the web page, uh, we were able to track down the one from the film. It is uh, that's interesting. It is owned by the VFX supervisor from the film. Uh, his name is Peter Chang. He still has it, and it was actually the prototype that was made by Apple. And uh, come to find out that Apple only made that one. And the reason they make them Interesting fact here, guys, is this this torch bit is a different size. So luckily I have uh, a kit here. Um, the reason they make those is so that they can do airflow tests to make sure that the air is flowing through the, the laptop. Uh, what the hell? Through the laptop. Um, so that is the only one. Uh, the only real one that's in existence. Now, that being said, I do have uh, intention <laughs> to try my hand at doing a, a recreation. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll see. Let's see how, how Apple does it. I mean, there's literally five screws, and it feels like the whole top is just going to lift off of this thing. I probably have to un unclasp it, though. Let's take this out. And it sure feels like it wants to come apart. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now, what do we have in here? Just one giant ribbon. Yeah, we'll get this broken down quick. Start with the screen again. Some sort of heat sink. Hey, 
everything is torques on here. So let's uh, start with the keyboard, shall we? Looks like the keyboard will drop out from the bottom after I take these out. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to find a clear case for that laptop. Uh, you would have to literally get the laptop and uh, make a, uh, a mold for it. Um, but uh, judging by how this one's coming apart, it probably would be a fairly easy task. Um, to at least get it apart and then uh, making a silicone mold is, is not, silicone mold, I'm sorry, is uh, not very difficult to do. Um, all right, so these ribbons here are the keyboard, so we will take those out. This one I will use pliers for since I have them. They're not the right pliers for the job, but they'll do the trick, I think. Nope. Where did my small pliers go? That's the old-fashioned way. All right, well, I don't want to mess these up because, again, I, this is actually the the keyboard that is used in the laptop. If you actually look at uh, at the scene with, uh, with Nikon, you'll notice that his laptop doesn't close properly, if you look really close. Um, and it's, it's because of this keyboard. Uh, if you look at it, as soon as I get it all the way apart here, um, the space bar sticks up higher than all of the rest of the keys. And uh, so it, it doesn't uh, sit flat. Uh, so this is a really small keyboard, really slim. Well done, Apple. Uh, all right. Last but not least, let's uh, try stripping this down. And we've got about two minutes left, so we'll get the top of this case apart and, uh, and probably call it there for today. Uh-huh. Farad. I forget what these are called. It's like a farad ring or something like that. Um, it looks like it does have to come off though. And it does. I did, uh, didn't ever take like electronics classes in school. Um, it would have been something I would have really enjoyed, but, uh, never did. I just got real good at taking things apart, trying to figure out how things work. <laughs> All right. That's out. The screen should, I believe, come off. Now these hinges are going to be an issue, aren't they? Maybe these things pop off. Yep. I was never, when I was younger, I was never a fan of Apple, but uh, holy hell did they put together a decent product here. I will give them that. Well made.
All right, I'll get this screen off and then I, I think we will call it. In fact, there, there's my timer saying, hey, the jig is up. All right. Is that broken plastic? Maybe. All right, come on now. Oh, we're so close. What is still holding it in? Anybody see what's... Uh... Oh, does this thing come off too? Maybe it does. Yep. Let's try this way. Yep, there it is. All right, two more screws. And we will be out of here. Um, so between this video and, you know, I'll try to do one next week as well. Probably looking at Wednesday instead of Thursday. But Wednesday didn't work for me this week, um, even though I had intended to do it. Uh, we will have everything ready to go for paint. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll get some some primer and stuff done on these things but uh all i need from this again is this bezel uh and the screen itself and i think we're we're good to go well, guys hopefully you enjoyed um and uh yeah leave leave some some comments uh share the video share the the twitch stream uh see if we can get some more people checking out uh the page um it's always nice to find those fans of hackers out there but uh yeah, I'll go ahead and, and finish up uh, taking this off, and uh, we will see you guys back here next time. Keep an eye out on the page. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email us uh, at admin team at hackerscurator.com, or uh, you know you can contact us through the link on the web page. Message us on Facebook, message us on Twitter, whatever. You know we're we're pretty good about replying to things. And, uh, and getting back to folks. So, um, yep, we're going to call it here for a day. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, PS1 Addict, Zevo, uh, IFO himself. Um, and uh, we'll check you guys next time. Take it easy.